go. All right, so solving for W, that means we want to isolate the W. We want that variable to be all by itself on one side of the equal sign. So most of these cases, my first job is going to be to get rid of whatever's being added or subtracted to my designated variable. So in this case, it's the 2L. How do we make a 2L go away? Subtract it. Whatever we do on one side of the equal sign, we've got to do on the other side of the equal sign. What's P minus 2L, Caitlin? P minus 2L. And then on the right side, all we got left is 2W. So this is turning out pretty much just like the bell ringer. We're trying to solve for W. It's being multiplied by 2. <coughs> so we undo that with division of 2. So my W, the 2's cancel out. My W is just P minus 2L over 2. Okay, now, other ways to write that. That's where I'm going to stop. That's my final answer. But other ways to write that. That whole thing being divided by 2 means that you're actually dividing each piece by 2, right? Yep. So you can have P divided by 2 minus L. Isn't that the same thing? Because the 2 divided by 2 there would cancel out. So that's another option, but I would have stopped at the one that I circled. Any problems on that? Questions on that? They had to work on my Chromebook and they reset it and I... Bet I gotta have that stupid lizard as my background forever now. I just saw that on there. I guess it's a cute lizard, but my background is better. Okay. Remove. Won't let me believe that video now. This thing is on <coughs> All right. This next one, we're gonna add a level here. This next one, I've got y equals one half times x plus 3. Okay, it's already solved for y. There's only one other variable in there, so you know we're going to solve this one for x, right? Wasn't, wasn't another choice. This time, though, it's a little bit different because I just told you that on that last one we were getting rid of what was being added or subtracted first. We can't do that this time. Why can't we get rid of that plus 3 first? Okay, because it's in that parentheses, which means something is being distributed to it. So good answers up there, all of y'all. Um, so that is an option, and that's what first period told me they wanted to do first, was distribute that one half. You could, but don't. Okay, this, the one half is outside the parentheses, which does mean that it gets distributed to everything inside. But I don't want to put more stuff on this x when I'm trying to get the x all by itself. So if I put the one half on there, in a little bit I'm going to have to end up taking it off. So why don't I just take it off now? Can I do that? Yeah. What does one half right next to the parentheses mean? That's trade one part of I. Multiply. Multiply. So can I just divide and get rid of it now? Yeah. Good idea. So we're going to divide both sides by a half. I do that here, something divided by itself, that just cancels out. What do you do when you divide by a half? What's that the same as? Good, multiply by its reciprocal, so that's 2y equals x plus 3. Just got one step there now to get the x by itself. You got to get rid of that plus 3. That's baby steps. We do get rid of the plus 3. Right. Subtracts. <laughs> Blue Cross and Lacey Knight, please come to the high school office. That's it. Got the X all by itself. Not too bad. Now, the reason we did that problem, that's going to make a connection to one that's going to be a little bit harder for us. That's going to all run together. Everybody got that one? All right, so... I'll see if that video ever uploaded. I think it did. I'm trying to be technological around this place. It's not easy. This is the actual formula for area of a rectangular solid. 2 times the height times the width plus 2 times the length times the width plus 2 times the length times the height. Okay? So we are going to solve that for L. All right. 
So what I need for you to see, is everybody ready? We need to stay together on this first one. What I need for you to see is that there's there are two L's there. Okay, everybody find those two L's. I'll highlight them up here for us real quick. I got an L in two different places. Now we're trying to get the L all by itself on one side of the equal sign. So when we have multiple ones like that, and we can't combine any of that because none of it's all like terms. So when we have multiple ones like that, we want to get rid of the one or how, whichever ones don't have it. So I didn't find an L here. So I want to get rid of this. Okay, how do I get rid of 2HW? Subtract it. So we're going to subtract that from both sides. Subtract it from here, it goes away. Subtract it from the A. So I just have A minus 2HW. That's gone. Equals 2LW plus 2LH. All right. This is a deep thoughts question here. I've got those two L's on the right side. Look at the last problem that we did. I told you there was going to be a connection. You had that one half right outside the parentheses so that then we were able to get rid of it. Okay, I could the two, yes, but what else? What, they both have a two. That's why Kaylee said the two, because see, she sees a two on both sides of it there. But they got something else. They also both have an L. And the L is what I'm trying to solve for. So if I can bring that L outside, then all I'll have to do in a minute is divide. Okay, so let's let's look at that. Let's bring down this A minus 2HW. And let's just bring, I could bring the 2 out also, but that's not going to save me any steps. So let's just bring the L out. We're going to take the L out of both of those pieces. It's backwards distributed property, right? Factoring, just taking them out. So if I take the L out of this piece, it leaves me with a 2W. If I take the L out of this piece, Lisa with the 2H. So now it's just like the previous problem. We're trying to get the L all by itself. It's being multiplied by that whole quantity, 2W plus 2H. So we're going to divide. divide by that whole quantity. So we're going to say divided by 2W plus 2H. Divided by 2W plus 2H. Over here, shh, shh, he gone. Leaves you just with L equals... Over here, can I mark your thing out like I did? Good, Chase is correct. And we haven't covered that, Ninja Maths, what I called it now, number two, y'all remember? We haven't covered that again yet, but the reason nothing can cancel out, like I can't mark those H's out, I can't cancel those out, or I can't cancel those W's there out, because it's got to be the whole binomial or nothing. Y'all heard me say now, number two, 10 million times, you can't pick apart a binomial. It's got to be the whole thing or nothing. So that's it. Uh-huh. This is when we did this in number two and when the little talks do it in junior high, they get confused because you you want to get an answer. And that's like not a I mean, that's not seven, you know. Well, why can't I get like five or a number and now you got the whole alphabet up there and you get confused. Just a little. Maybe not lost. But all right, I'm gonna give you that same formula. So let me get a clean sheet of paper for you. Same formula. Area was two height width plus two length width plus two length height. See, we solved it that time for L. I want you to try to solve it for W. So right now on your own, let's try and see if you can solve it for W. Talk to your neighbor. Look back at the previous problem. If you're pretty much going to do the same steps, just going to be with different pieces of it. Okay, try it and see. Uh-huh, yep.
That's the distance most of the time in miles, rate most of the time in miles per hour, T most of the time in hours. That could be different, but you'll be told what your units are if it ever is. All right, we're on a, a trip here, and we're going 500 miles. So we know our distance is going to be 500 miles. So we're making a pretty good trip, 500 miles. I don't know why, but we're only driving through neighborhoods or something, and so we're only going 25 miles per hour. We need to get out on the interstate, but we're not. So we want to know how long is it going to take us to get there. Now it is. That is going to be a very long trip, only going an average of 25 miles an hour. 
Now, what we're intended to do here with this unit, since we're working on transforming formulas, they want us to transform the formula first. In all honesty, it does not matter. I don't care. But if we're trying to solve this for t, then we would need to solve this for t. My t is being multiplied by r, so I'm going to divide by r. So time is distance divided by rate. Now you know your distance. You know your rate. So how long did that take it? 20 hours. So they want you to do this? I'm guessing they just make it miles. Yeah. If I were doing this on my own, I would I'll just plug it in the original <laughs> equation and go from there. So you, you do the same thing. You're actually doing the same thing either way. What Mason was talking about, if I just plugged it in the original equation, 500 equals 25 times t, I'm still doing the same thing. I'm still dividing by 25. So it doesn't matter if you want to transform the formula or not. You have to do the same thing. Did you figure out what you did wrong? Did you say 18 or something? No, I said 20. Oh. I thought I heard 18. I saw you look at me weird. I was wondering why you looked at me like that. That's a long time to go. I mean, 500 miles is a pretty good trip. That would, that's, uh, it's, I think it's 400 miles to Waco. So that's, that's on the other side of that. Percentage problems. <laughs> Going to use this little hint here. Part, part, part whole. Part and whole Ugh. is equal to the percentage of decimal. All right. When we're dealing with finding percentages, you're going to have a partial, your partial amount divided by the whole amount, and that'll get you the percentage of decimal. And you know that. Okay. Think about it in terms of a quiz or a test. If we had a five question quiz and you got three right, your part was three, the whole was five, so you would do three divided by five, and then that would give you the decimal, you'd move your decimal to get the percentage, okay? So this is not new, part divided by whole, it's just another way of saying it, okay? Everybody with me on that? Yeah. All right, so if I said that we've got a mixture of gas and oil, a mixture of gas and oil, the total in our container is 20 ounces. I just told you the whole because I told you how much we have. We've got 20 ounces in our gas and oil mixture. All right. One ounce is oil. So what's that in this setup? That's part of it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So my part is the one ounce of oil. The question says what percentage is oil? So I've got part divided by whole. What's one divided by 20? You got a calculator. 0.05, so if you convert that to a percentage, no? 5%. So out of that mixture of gas and oil, 5% of it was oil, which would tell you 95% of it was gas. Okay, everybody remember how to figure that? What if I gave you the percentage and we had to figure out one of the other pieces? Can we do that? Let's try one. Everybody done with that problem? Sure. Still looking at parts over whole is equal to the percentage as a decimal. All right. So we got a car salesman who earns 8% commission on every car he sells. Where's 8% commission going to go in our formula? 8% would be the percent. But we got to make it a decimal. What's 8% as a decimal? 0.08. So something over something is going to be equal to 0.08. Okay, let me read some more. The car salesman earns 8% commission on every car he sells. How much does he earn on a car that sells for 12000 So what's going to be the part and what's going to be the whole? Okay, holds the 12000 And then how much does he earn? He's going to earn a part of that, so that's what we don't know. Right? Now, our variable is being divided by 12,000, so what would we do to solve? Multiply. Good job. How much does he earn for selling that car? $960. Which, you know, that seems like a lot. Because that's not even a new car anymore at $12,000, but 
you're bad and you just sell one car a week. I mean, so that that's pretty good. But uh, I don't know if I'd be willing to try it or not. I'd probably suck at selling a car. I can tell it to And I'd be like, no, you don't want to spend that much money. Save your money. And then I wouldn't get any commission. I've got to a really good investment. <laughs> give you the info off of it that we need. But let me read you the little problem here. It says, in 2005, the U.S. spent an estimated $35.9 billion on their pets. So if I'm thinking part over whole, that's how much they spent on their pets. That's going to be my, my pie chart is about different categories, like if they spent food, if they went to the vet. So total on the pet would be the whole. So I'm going to have a $35.9 billion in the total. That's tons of money. Um, in the 2005, people in the U.S. spent $35.9 billion on their pets. Determine how much of this amount was spent on pet food. Okay, so I'm looking at my chart here, and I see pet food says 40.2%. So that's going to go in the percent spot, but I need to make 40.2% a decimal. So the almost 4 Good. First period, so there's already a decimal in it. Well, you can still, you still have to move it twice on this percentage. Okay, so what we've got, we know that they spent 40, a little over 40% on food, but we want to know the dollar amount of that. So that's going to be the part that we're looking for. Okay, so how much money did they spend on pet food? 14.4318. So we'll say $14.4 billion that year was spent on pet food. Whew. I don't know. I, I like animals. I am always have pets, but I don't go to extremes like people. I, mean, I feed and water and keep them alive and get their yearly shot. But Wait, is that saying one person sent that? No, in the U.S. Oh, okay. The US. I'm fine. So there's, there's people that, that go crazy on pets. My mom does on her koala. Oh. 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 And I've had it ever since me and my girlfriend were dating. Like the day we started dating is when we got it. So we've had it ever since we were dating. We bottle fed it and everything. So it's, I mean, it's basically thing, but she don't like her. She does like her. She doesn't like her. Right, no, like her. My who? Well, well, Austin Herndon. She doesn't. Um, she's a picky right now. Are you already, like scared to get rabies or something? No. Why do you get rabies? How do you know? You don't run around everywhere. Let's start before they die when they do that. I don't know. And I guess if you've had it like in captivity, you would have been exposed. We got like, we got spent like probably seven we got like a $400 cage for it. So you would it's be like, one of the statistics. It's, like, it's like a log house, but it's inside our actual house, and they have, they have 13 dogs, like six pits, and the rest of them are other types of dogs, and then a cat, two rats, and... Rats? Yeah. Well, the rats are pretty gross. They're really small. I didn't think well, I told you any dogs. They were just running around when they found them. <laughs> I didn't think I saw that many dogs. But no, there's baby pits, but nobody's allowed to try them. They're supposed to be like vicious. They're not supposed to be. Like, 
a lowercase b plus a capital B. So you're going to have an answer that says H equals something, and you're going to have an answer that says capital B equals something. Two different problems. Try both of those. Go. Almost. Yeah. 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 The H one ought to be easy. Get the H one. Get the H one. Almost. Oh, this is the stuff we've been doing today. Let's go. Yeah, solving it for like, like we started. Okay. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't even see anything. Your arms in the way. He tried. Put okay. your arm in the way. Put your arm in the way. I think I've done messed up. Already. Yeah, I don't think that's how it goes. Yeah.
and we talked and we remembered that when we divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so that would be 2a, right? Mm -hmm. So we got 2a is equal to h times b plus b. I'm trying to solve for h. It's being multiplied by b plus b, so I'm just going to divide by b plus b. So that'll cancel out. I'll just have h equals 2a divided by b plus b. That's it. So a lot of you there. So good job. I got close. I just forgot to do that. 100%. Uh, no. The 2a thing? Yeah. No, no, no. Okay, on the second one. Let me write the original again so I can mark on it some more. All right, this time we're trying to get the capital B by itself, but it's in parentheses with the lowercase b. So I want to get rid of everything else first. So I want to get rid of the one-half h. Can't you just distribute it? I could, but it'll be easier to get rid of it first. Okay, so it's all being multiplied right now, like Baylor said, with the distributive. So I'm going to undo that multiplication and divide. So I'm going to divide by one-half. H. I got that, Grace? When I divide by one half H, and this is where some of you got a little bit confused. We know dividing by one half is multiplying by two, so that turns that to a 2A, but I still have to divide by H, so that H will stay on the bottom. Okay, and then we've got canceled out over here, so we've got B plus B. Okay, trying to solve for the capital B. And it's being added with a lowercase b. So what do we do to get rid of that? Just subtract that little bit. Uh-huh. We just subtract that. So we've got 2a minus b, because we subtract it all over h, is equal to b. Now, probably a better way to write that, I'm not going to circle that yet, a better way to write that probably would be this B is is really it's it's uh, really would be better. I'm getting ahead of myself. Like that, right? That that that's the better way, Mason. So you've got a better answer than me because I'm subtracting it from this. I don't know what this is yet, so I probably shouldn't have done that. I just thought about it after I wrote it. That wasn't the best way to write. Mason had the best way. All right. Questions on that? Okay, you're fixing to have an uh, exit question show up. So we've got lots of time, but I've got to copy it and sh make it show up in there. Could be a grade, you don't know. 